All right, I need to finish chapter one. We started last time. The last topic I really wanted to cover was put this current class, our new class, heat transfer, in context of the knowledge you gained already in a previous class, thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a process from initial state one to final state two. Can we write that from memory? Do we need an equation sheet or do we learn? Right, so it's going to be the final energy minus the initial energy of our system, closed meaning no mass transfer, and how can heat or energy transfer into the system? First of all, it'll be transferred in with heat, so Q, sometimes I'd like to put 1 to 2 emphasizing it's during the process, although the textbook that we use didn't put a additional subscripts to clarify what that Q is, but that's heat transfer in during the process minus the work out during the process. And our sign convention for a control system is uh, heat in, work out. That's our positive directions. Somebody says, can you write it on a rate basis? Rate basis, that's per unit time. So what we did was we had, well, the change in the energy, we make it smaller and smaller such that the difference between the initial and final state of this process is closer and closer it's smaller and we have then a small amount of heat transfer and a small amount of work transfer we divide that equation by a small amount of change in time a small amount of change in time a small amount of change in time and in that limit that gives us a time derivative the rate of change of the energy stored in that closed system is equal to the rate at which heat is flowing in minus the rate at which work is out, transferred out. Do these two equations look good? Yeah. And then what we had was we had it for a control volume, an open system. Well, what's the difference between an open and closed? You have mass transfer. So we have this system like this. We often designate it with the CV, control volume. We have our flow in, flow out. Let's call it only one inlet, state one, only one outlet, state two. So we have the mass flow rate in at one, the mass flow rate out at two. Write the general conservation of energy. For that system, you'd have the rate of change of energy inside that control volume. How does it change with time? Is it going up? Are you accumulating energy like your bank accounts? Huh? Are you getting more money, richer ever by the day? No. All right. Well, let's continue on. Well, Q dot, the rate at which heat is transferred in, minus W dot across that control volume surface. That's the typical power, shaft power, if you analyze pumps, turbines, other things. And then you have that mass flow rate coming in, bringing with its enthalpy, bringing with its specific kinetic energy, bringing with its potential energy, minus the rate at, that it's flowing out with the mass enthalpy at 2, kinetic energy at 2, potential energy at 2. Now look at this equation. Yeah, we had the great long equation, but 99% of the time we solve steady state. True. Which term is 0 in this equation if it's steady state? Yeah, this term, if it's steady. If it's also steady state with one inlet and one outlet, can m dot 1 be any different than m dot 2? No, they're the same. So we, we, we get rid of that subscript. It's just m dot, steady state. And often the change in the specific kinetic energy equals the change in the specific potential energy, which is zero. We say we're neglecting changes in kinetic and potential energy. Oh, change in enthalpy, sure but not change in speed such that you have a big change in kinetic energy or elevation such you have a change in. So these simplify and you're left with the equation that looks like maybe zero is equal to Q dot minus W dot CV plus the M dot bringing with it H1 minus taking out H2. Remember that equation? And often what we did was divided the whole equation by M dot. And then we had zero is equal to lowercase Q minus lowercase wcv plus enthalpy 1 minus enthalpy 2. I pause. Did that look good? Do you remember that? I'm trying to put the new information that you're going to learn in this class in context to the previous information. So as a review, quickly, what was that lowercase q? Was that q dot divided by m dot? 
Sure. And you know what? You can sometimes even come up here and they would write, oh, lowercase e2 minus lowercase e1 is lowercase q minus lowercase w. That's just, they divided the whole equation by the mass in the closed system. In that case, this q was q divided by m. Not q dot over m dot, but just q over m. So we had lots of terms like, oh yeah, we have the cap q, oh cap q dot, oh lowercase q. And they all mean something to you coming into this class. Well, you ready for some change? Let's go do some changing. So in the previous class, if I said, what's cap q? You'd say, oh, that's the amount of heat transfer, typical SI units, joule. I say lowercase q, we just covered it. What is it? Heat transfer per unit mass. If it's a closed system, often q divided by m, or if it's an open system, we often talked about q dot over m dot. q double prime, you've already been introduced to it in this class. It's the heat flux. Was it ever used in thermo? Nope. All right, how about q cap q with a dot on it? Oh, that's the rate of heat transfer. Have you already been introduced to a symbol for rate of heat transfer in this class? Is it cap Q dot? Look at this. The rate of heat transfer is the rate of heat transfer. Your collision of symbols here or rethink symbols here, okay? Well, why didn't the authors of the book get together and force convention? I don't know. I mean, you ever try and get your neighbor to go to sleep and stop playing their music at the same time that you like to go to sleep and stop playing your music in apartments and all that? Forget it. It don't work. Different authors develop different syntax. I mean, it's pretty consistent overall, but, but this nomenclature is just what it is. So in this class... Lowercase q is not the same as lowercase q in your previous class. Here, it is the rate of heat transfer. Right? Before, it was some heat transfer per unit mass. Now, how about q dot in this class? Not used. How about q, lowercase q dot in the previous class? Not used. But we have this term, the volumetric heat generation rate introduced in chapter two of this textbook. Did that help? Let's press forward.